Hazards of Excavations Collapse of earthwork due to lack of, inadequate, or weak shoring Persons falling into excavations due to lack of barriers or inadequate fencing, warning signs and illumination Soil from excavations not being thrown clear of the sides, causing overloading and collapsing of walls Water seepage causing drowning or collapse of walls, failure to maintain shoring, particularly after rainstorm. Persons working too close together causing hazards to each other. Asphyxiation and intoxication from exhaust gases of running engines which, contain CO and CO2 that may have accumulated at the bottom of the excavation. Asphyxiation by carbon dioxide that can be present in excavations caused by air stagnation through lack of ventilation, especially on low wind days. Symptoms are dizziness, pounding in the ears, and shortness of breath. Exposure of personnel to toxic or flammable gases or liquid accumulation due to leaking pipelines, contaminated equipment slash buried hazardous materials, waste, for example leaded sludge. Exposure of foundations affecting or collapsing the supported structure. Workers not being provided with or not using proper tools for the job. Workers in the excavation being struck by soil or materials falling into the excavation. Falls through unsafe means of access into or out of the excavation. Workers being struck by excavating machinery, for example, the bucket of the excavator. Vehicles or equipment too close to the edge, causing the edge to collapse. Vehicles being driven into the excavation due to driving errors, inadequate warning signs, or the absence of stop blocks. Fire, explosion due to use of tools and tackles used during excavation. E.g. sparks generated by pneumatic, jackhammer when used without taking adequate precautions. Vibrations due to machinery and heavy vehicles in close proximity. Hazards of high noise level due to use of mechanical equipment. Striking of services, for example, electricity, communication cables and oil, gas pipes, utility pipes. Excavation precautions. The contractor shall submit a detailed method statement to the team leader of the executing division and obtain prior approval for it before commencing work. The statement shall include the methods of excavation, the means of support to sides of excavations, the safety and support of neighboring property, the system of dewatering, the demolition of existing surface and underground structures and obstacles, moving of any existing services, pipes and like on the site affecting the work. Executor shall ensure compliance to precautions specified on the work permit and excavation authorization form. Issuing authority shall monitor these conditions. Each signatory in Section 3 of the excavation authorization shall monitor the site daily while the excavation is in progress, to ensure that the respective underground facilities are not damaged. Issuer shall check the site for damages before closing the work permit. O. Oh. Excavations adjacent to building, structures, pipe racks, etc., may require temporary supports or strotting. Concerned civil engineer shall sign the authorization and provide the relevant safety recommendations. Certain recommendations may require to be implemented before starting of excavation work. Trenches or excavations which are 1.2 meter or deeper and into which a person is required to descend must be shored stepped or the side sloped back depending on the classification of soil as explained under the subsequent clauses. Excavations less than 1.2 meters also may require shoring depending on the nature of the soil. KNPC civil engineer shall be the authority to decide whether the soil is good, medium or poor to determine the type of protection required to prevent collapse of the excavation. If the surface area allows, Shoring can be substituted by battering, sloping, the sides down to an angle of 45 degrees. If surface area is limited, poling boards shall be placed approximately 2 meters apart with horizontal struts not more than 1 meter apart. Poling boards or sheet piles shall be placed not more than 750 millimeters, 
30 inches, apart faced with walling at 1 meter centers, across strutted with suitable timber. Extra polling board shall be inserted if the condition of the ground deteriorates. In all areas where excavations are to be made in loose sand or poor soil, close sheeting or sheeting piling shall be used. For excavations exceeding 3 meters, 10 feet, in depth, close sheeting or sheeting piling shall be used irrespective of type of soil. Uses of steel sheet piling Steel sheet piling is generally used on major excavations such as large building foundations or where large embankments are to be held back. It is also used where an excavation is in close proximity to adjoining buildings. The use of steel sheet piling is a similar method of trench support to closed sheeting, but does not require oh, as much expertise and time. However, skill is necessary to safely install whalers and toms which support the steel sheet piling. See Appendix C. Ladder shall be positioned projecting a minimum of 1 meter above the edge of the excavation. A stairway, ladder, ramp or other safe means of egress shall be located in trench excavations that are 1.2 meters or more in depth. There should be at least two means of exit for persons working inside large excavation within 7.5 meters of travel distance. All walkways across an excavation shall be of scaffold construction with handrails, see safe work practices on scaffolds and ladders. Jumping across excavations is not allowed. Executor shall barricade the excavation to avoid the hazard of persons and vehicles falling in. Reflective warning notices, traffic cones and flashing lights should also be provided at the edge of excavation and at a safe distance ahead. Barricading material shall be able to withstand the ambient conditions and shall remain stable during adverse weather. Solid barricades, concrete, steel, shall be provided in the road crossing excavation. Adequate illumination inside and outside the excavation shall be provided if the work continues after nightfall. Executor shall inspect strutting and shoring materials before their use. Minimum distance from edge of excavation for parking of equipment shall be depth x 1.5 meters. In case of area constraint, decision should be taken at site jointly by area safety engineer, issuer and executor. When mobile equipment is operated adjacent to the edge of an excavation, a warning system shall be used when the operator does not have a clear and direct view of the edge of the excavation. The warning system must consist of barricades hand or mechanical signals, or O oh, stop logs. If possible, the surface grade will slope away from the excavation. In some cases the equipment need to be tethered with restraining devices. Excavated soil, materials, etc. shall be kept at least 0.6 meters away from the edge of the excavation. This distance may have to be increased depending on the soil criteria and material loads and should be subject to engineer approval. Executor shall check the excavation safeguards, shoring, sloping and supporting system daily before starting the job and after every rainstorm or other hazard increasing occurrence. Engine driven equipment should not be used inside confined excavations. If such equipment is to be used, Confined space precautions shall be followed. Exhaust gases from the engines of excavators, etc., shall be kept clear off the excavation. Signal man shall always be present during the operation of heavy equipment such as loader, grader, dump truck etc. Refer document, HSETSSA 05 2018 Engine Driven Mobile Equipment Safety for precautions to be taken during operation of various construction equipment. Trial excavations shall be carried out to ensure safety of underground facilities before use of mechanical excavators. When it is necessary to excavate within 1.5 meter of an underground pipe, the location of the underground pipe shall be precisely located by hand digging the last 1 meter. As an added precaution, cable and pipe locating instrument shall be used to locate underground conduits, pipes or cables. Climbing over underground facilities such as cables, 
live piping etc. shall not be permitted and no material shall be stored over underground facility. Underground facility to be properly supported while excavating below slash around such facility. O. Oh. Wherever a line marking thread, line dowry, is fixed at excavated area which creates a tripping hazard, proper warning tape shall be placed over the thread. When concrete slash asphalt breaking is to be done with jackhammer near live sensitive instruments at plant site, diamond cutter should be used for cutting concrete slash asphalt initially to avoid tripping of live instrument system due to vibration and then jackhammer to be used. Use of jackhammer or cutter shall be limited to breaking of concrete or asphalt paving only. Excavation shall cease if any underground services are discovered or damaged during excavation. Matter shall be reported to the concerned division without delay. The work shall be restarted only after approval has been obtained from concerned division and a new work permit obtained. Executor shall report any damage to underground services or any other incident immediately to the ECCC and report submitted as per procedure on incident reporting and investigation. Prevention of drowning, adequate fencing, warning notices, etc., are to be provided around an excavation deeper than 1.2 meters and contains enough water to present the risk of persons being drowned. The fencing shall be removed only for the minimum time required for the passage of equipment and materials. If the excavation is in an area where persons could easily gain access, suitable, rescue equipment shall be provided on or near the site. Required PPE including reflective vests shall be worn by personnel at the excavation site. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you.